How to replace the old capacitors in a Leslie Speaker crossover network. Like everything to do with a Leslie Speaker, it's a really well-made device. And it uses a special capacitor. It's actually two capacitors in one. But unfortunately, as this unit is over 50 years old, the value of the capacitors has drifted considerably. Testing it with a proper capacitance meter, it gave a value of 30 microfarads for each capacitor, which is incorrect. It's supposed to have 12.5 microfarads and 7.8 microfarads. This twin capacitor package is not fastened into the crossover network. It's just held in place by a cork pad. Here you see the coils. One is for the bass speaker and one is for the treble speaker. The one with the most windings is for the bass speaker and the one with the less windings is for the treble speaker. Here is the circuit diagram. As you can see, the crossover network is quite simple. All it does is separates out the bass and the treble at a crossover point of 800 cycles. Even though the original capacitor package had drifted considerably, the Leslie still sounded good, but the distortion was more noticeable as bass was being allowed to the treble speaker. To power my pair of Leslie speakers, I want to use this amplifier so it seems sensible to replace the capacitors with ones of a higher voltage rating to suit the higher power speakers that I'm also going to fit in the Leslie. These are the capacitors that I'm using in the crossover. They are Solon capacitors, and I got them from a company in England called Falcon Acoustics. Falcon Acoustics know an awful lot about crossovers, and I was given some very good advice by Jerry at Falcon Acoustics. Obtaining the values is a bit of a problem, you can't get these values off the shelf anymore, so you have to wire two 25 microfarad capacitors in series to give 12.5 microfarads and two 3.9 microfarad capacitors in parallel to give 7.8 microfarads. Wiring capacitors is exactly the opposite of wiring resistors. In series it halves the value, in parallel it doubles the value. The easiest way to mount the capacitors I found was to use an electrical chop block connector like you see here. I will eventually chop off the end tube before fitting it into the crossover. All you have to do now is cut out the old capacitor. I would suggest that you leave a little bit of the coloured wire on the terminal so that you don't get confused and put the capacitors in the wrong way around. It's a shame really to dispense with this capacitor because it's a great old piece of kit and they don't make them like this anymore. The cork pad is going to be too thick so I'll have to trim that down but I probably will be fastening the capacitor network into the box with some silicone rubber anyway. Thanks for watching, I hope it's been of some use to you.